Okay, here we have the KR multi-case storage and transport system. I've got here a number of cases. These are what they call the standard size. I've got both, them both in the silver, the black, and the cardboard, and I'm gonna to explain to you how flexible this is. First of all, I want to show you a brand new case. So I've not put anything in this, and I want to just show you how they arrive. So you get a nice little protective loop around the handle, just so it doesn't scratch your uh, your case. But to be honest, as you can see, I've not got any problems or damage on the cases I've already got. It's just a packaging thing. Inside these hard cases, you've actually got very heavy, only two, three mil deep, but a very heavy, thick, dense foam that lines the case inside. Inside of the case itself, you then get the characteristic blue foam. I've only seen KR use blue foam up to now, and it's a, it's a good quality, soft, but firm foam. Okay, you get a carry strap handle, which fixes on the sides here. You've got some nice sort of metal D-link uh, hinge type flap metal attachments on the sides. You also get a, uh, a pocket, which you can stick onto the front of your case. So you can actually pop a little note inside there so you can label them. You get a little uh, silica gel pack to keep any moisture issues out whilst they're traveling and some keys. And I'm gonna just quickly show you the locks because they're quite sturdy and you get a, a very reassuring click uh, when locking your figures inside the cases. Now I have also got a load of full cases, which, which I'm gonna show you in a bit, um, but I'm gonna just show you this brand new empty one. And as I turn the key, that click, I'm not gonna put a crazy amount of force on it, but I'm, I'm really trying to get into there. It's keeping that lid down and absolutely means when you're carrying this around outside your house, you've got no risk of your valuable figures falling on the floor, etc. So. Um, this is the KNR standard size, it's like a unit of measure. You also get half sizes, actually available in the cardboard and recently in the aluminium as well. You also then get a half depth, so half width, half depth, so you then get a shallower case. You then also get a, a double, so like a, a, a more, almost like a cube. You then also get a quad, which is a much larger case altogether. And they also do a kind of rolling stock type um, case on wheels for when you're really going to conventions and you want to really get four of your cardboard multi-case cases inside. Okay, so quickly, the, what makes these cases really fantastic, apart from being sturdy, is the foam. Now, I've just got here uh, a couple of very deep sets of foam in here that are empty. What you'll notice, what, what is always the case with the K&R foam is that they're very neatly cut and they're also well glued to the bottom sheet. So they're uh, very soft and flexible, as I explained. Really gives quite a lot of give, but still strong. They do not tear or rip easily. And what you'll see is uh, these are glued very securely to the bases. And that is including inside every single element, every single box module. Okay, so all these are, are glued. There's no looseness at all in there. What you also get with each case is a single topper. So this thin case is uh, loose, and there you go with the case. Now, a couple of tips. You can see this often gets stuck up there. I personally would actually uh, stick them up there. I think that would be a really nice idea, maybe a little bit of Velcro, because at the end of the day, you don't want to lose these, and you don't want to forget where they are, and you want to make sure each case has got one. So uh, I'm probably going to look at getting some double-sided tape to hold those in place. So as I open and close, I've always got my top layer to protect my figures always within, within every case. Okay, I'm gonna show you some of my boxes that I've got figures in. Some are half filled, some are fully filled, just to give you a feeling for what they look like with figures in. And quickly bring one of these to the fore. This hasn't got too many figures in, but it gives you an idea. This is uh, already got stuck onto the front here, um, the pouch. So uh, you put a bit of paper in there to remind you what the case is. This is my mixed case number one. So this, is, uh, this often leaves the house. And inside I've got shallower foam uh, trays. So I've actually got three in this tray, where in the first tray I showed you the brand new one, there's only two. So although this is still a standard size, KR is all about having what option size you need. Let me show you a tray with some figures in now. Now, you just told me to pick that up. These are metal figures, these are all hobgoblins. These are 25 to 28 mil. Okay, these are metal. Um, they're all well protected in here. I've got a few larger figures, there's a standard bearer. And as you can see, what I've done here is I've actually just uh, done a little bit of surgery on the foam. So what I actually recommend is scissors because you are going to tailor these trays a bit. So although most of these figures are fitting nicely within this third height foam tray, 
um, I wanted the standard bearer I just snipped the foam and I recommend you I recommend using scissors you don't want to go through the bottom so scissors you really get to control the depth of your cut you could also cut that off completely I leave it in because if I then change my mind as to what I'm going to use that tray for it's not such a big deal just leaving it flapping standing back again and you can probably have two decent sized figures either side of that but the way I'm using it at the moment is I've got a standard bearer hobgoblin with his uh, rather nasty looking chaos uh, banner going on there um, I often leave the silica gel in the boxes, uh, they all come with one and uh, unless I'm desperate and fill it up completely um, I don't see a problem keeping one in there. Okay, bottom tray here, I've actually got some much larger items that are slightly bulging, so this is actually a load of furniture I've got, a load of pub painted pub tables, domino games, food going on here etc. Now as you can see they're slightly bulging, these aren't heavy at all, these are all plastic and you know, I'm holding it with one hand. I would normally always lift my trays out two-handed, but this is something you've got to consider whether you want to buy your trays. Uh, some of the tray con configurations allow you to have the trays where you have, even though you've got this standard size case, you can actually have the foam trays themselves um, only half width, and therefore, so I'm not going to fold in half. I but you, you could then have different combinations and different depths. Obviously, it's a bit of a mathematical puzzle you've got to quickly solve, but uh, you'll quickly get the hang of it. Once you've got a few of these, you'll find it's uh, no big deal at all. Okay, that's enough of the metal cases. I'm going to quickly bring in a cardboard case because uh, a lot of the idea of this KR system is that you have your... We'll just tape it, tape it a minute. What you do is you have your mainstay storage at home in cardboard. Uh, because the aluminum cases they're very good but they're not exactly cheap and you keep your stock your stock of figures etc in home in cardboard and I have again uh, a whole nother bunch of trays different combinations again in here I actually have four trays so I've shown you a two a, a three depth and now a four depth and I've got here in the bottom a plick and pluck a pick and pluck even but I'll, uh, I'll quickly show you that in a little bit more detail so here I've got again a load of 25 28 mil figures I've even got some cavalry figures in here so you've got quite a bit of room in this particular tray combination and um, although large cavalry uh, so this is a donkey and pack mule etc uh, you probably would want to stand up it's exactly the right shape for a cavalry figure but you'd want a deeper tray Okay, so this case I've got him laying down because he's a, he's a short little mule and he fits in there nicely. But I've got some other trays that are double the height of this and I've actually got a bunch of camels, quite tall uh, land, land animals, standing upright. Okay, so this is just again to show you a little combination. So I'm going to pop that tray back in there. As you can see, these are all full of metal figures. Okay, so the plick, I keep saying this wrong, the pick and pluck. Um, what I'm going to just do is flex it open so you can see the options you've got here. Now you've got to be a little bit careful with this. This is when you can't quite find the size you need for your figure. So you might want some very long or almost square uh, type areas. And um, this comes in a number of depths as well. And I'm going to just quickly show you how I uh, remove the foam. Now you could get your scissors out again, but I find a very gentle parting of the waves type tear quite effective. So I try and secure with a stationary finger or a thumb the part I, I want to stay and then I gradually rub away tearing downwards the square of foam I want to remove okay and I find these useful I actually keep these because again some of the larger some of the larger um, size portions what you find is you're trying to have a, uh, a whole army or uh, like I had my hobgoblin army you might have a few smaller pieces and what you might want to do is to pop just bring one of these trays back into the front of the cam so you can see a little better. You might want to pop a little bit of foam to actually separate a compartment to pop two smaller items in. So uh, this means you can keep your, uh, you can decide which tray you want for the mainstay of the army. Here I've got a bunch of uh, warrior frogs and some warrior toads and I might have some really small younglings sitting on lily pads or whatever and I might want to double up the figures in a particular square compartment and I can do this whilst keeping them safely protected by popping some foam in depending on what your orientation I want for the depth and I've got their room for two small foot figures so I often keep the uh, the blue foam you paid for it why not let me just go on and show you again how I made this uh, larger area so the separators so if you actually pluck this out you can get a bunch of rectangles throughout but these separators are also 
uh, I'm going to try and say it right this time, pick and pluck, there we go. So you also can make a very large uh, area, you can keep going because even the separators on this horizontal as well, uh, on this uh, longitude as well as the horizontal are also pick and pluck and you can make yourself quite large areas. So again, this comes in different depths, it's very flexible. Um, it's, uh, I typically only buy this when I've got some very peculiarly large figures or very large square figures, flat figures, etc. Some set pieces that need a particularly large area to, uh, to keep them all well protected. So, uh, as I say, you really have got a, a wealth of options with the KR transport storage system. It is the foam that makes these things. The cases and boxes are absolutely fantastic. I've used these cardboard boxes many a time. What I do quite like about the cardboard boxes, they're sturdy, they're seriously thick, they're maybe 200 gram, maybe more, and uh, they don't wear, they don't, they don't fall to pieces. The lugs are very good, and I like the way that it locks with the handle going through the sole. So you hear a little click there, and you can quite easily, he says, or quite easily, grab that handle through. So when you're carrying it, again, there's no way that the box is going to open up and, and fall, figures are going to fall out. Typically these are used only in my home. They store, I'll see upright very nicely, flat sides by side, etc. KR multi-case also provides some, like as, as I said earlier, some suitcase size trolleys that will allow you to slide four of these into a, a really large wheeled suitcase that you could take uh, on, a, on a kind of expedition with your figures. So um, you really have got a lot of options. I'm going to quickly bring in um, a laptop just to quickly show their website and their websites are rather good and what I want to do is just do hopefully you can see this and I was going to quickly with through a few tabs so it's a good website um, UK Euro Europe and America now and so you can get the price of the website what I'm going to just quickly show you though is you've got all these various different cases so what you've seen here predominantly on the, on the table are what they call the uh, standard aluminium case comes in black or silver as you can see you can get uh, coveralls to put them in um, soft jackets soft wearable jackets although they come with a strap you don't need to they're more commonly used for people that have got cardboard and uh, don't want to invest in the aluminium boxes themselves and actually want to put them into uh, softer sleeves or backpacks and the backpacks and these soft cases come in single most of them come in singles and doubles so you can get a double width etc um, the hard aluminium cases as I mentioned you can get double height okay so you've got here a double aluminium case again black or silver now the only issue I would say with the doubles um, if you think about the tray depths uh, if you've got a double height I'm just going to stack two cardboard boxes on, on top here just to give you a, a bit of an idea then unless you're talking the very very serious deep foam I think lots of thin layers would get harder and harder to dig out as you're going down so personally for the kind of figures I've got mainly 25 and 28 mil I find the standard de depth case and standard size case perfect for me but they've got these double alum aluminium cases so once you've got yourself your case sorted chosen you then go on to the foam and their website is very good they've got pages and pages of foam not just uh, showing you the different options with regards to the size of, and orientation of the rectangles or squares but also allowing you to see the depth so there's a full depth one that would actually take up the size of a standard case you can also then have the as i mentioned earlier you've also got half width size foam trays which you can put in a standard case of course it's all very cleverly done it's very modular so they, they combine absolutely perfectly or a, again a full width half height tray and any combinations off so there's a real load of combinations going on here and you just click your way through and you can have a look at the pick and pluck if that's what you're after etc they also do some cardboard trays for some uh, more robust figures that don't need the protection etc I'm also going to quickly show you, and I've got nothing here of this, I've, they've got some very, very specialist foam cut shapes here for Dreadnoughts and Warhammer 40,000, so you can absolutely get these, uh, some of your key uh, large vehicles and uh, specially shaped units, etc, into, uh, into dedicated foam cut to purpose, so they've got some really... Uh, great customs trays these cost a little bit more than a standard the standard rectangular type bases that i've been showing you now but uh, again i think it's worth worth the effort one thing i would recommend if you're not sure what figure size to be buying one tape measure you can't beat a tape measure 
and 2KR are very good at uh, allowing you to print off their tray sizes. So you can actually print them off and put them side by side and combine them and decide what size do I need for my figures and then you can sort out the depth etc. And there's recommendations as well. So you really are very well guided on the uh, KR website to construct, uh, plan your case and then to get the phone to fit in it and it's all about the multiple options etc. So I'm forever pulling out a couple of trays of quarter height uh, depth to go into an aluminium case and then a, a cavalry tray to go into another case etc and it's all about being able to mix and match the uh, insides with each other so you're forever swapping around your foam going from your aluminium boxes in and out of your cardboard boxes for storage and I'm going to just quickly show you, I think I've got a cavalry option in here actually. Yeah, okay, so I mentioned this earlier. I've got a, a quite a deep, so this is a, a half height. And I've got in here a bunch of painted camels that are quite large. And I wanted to just also show you this because very large figures. that I've got these large Games Workshop bases. And you can see here I've got a four and a five uh, dob base going on here. Um, whilst they don't fit so well going in the correct way up, I find upside down they work absolutely brilliantly and even this very large figure here, again, the base is overhanging a few of the neighbouring figures but doesn't do any harm at all and you know, typically you've got uh, room to do larger rounder bases, that's the whole idea of the flexible foam, um, but you've got here room for the larger figures that just don't fit too well laying down because they've got bulky dual weapon wielding etc. Um, and as I say, the taller cavalry type figures. Um, now, if you've got these camels with mounts and spears, you're going to need, as you can imagine, a absolute full height um, foam tray just to handle those. But that's uh, all about picking the foam option that you need for your figures. So, like I say, have a good think about it. I like the idea of keeping the foam in the lid so it automatically opens up and I'm just going to quickly show you the next layer on here just so you can have a quick look. And I've got another layer again all full of metal, two-handed lift, no problem at all. Not completely full but um, there's, there's not many empty spaces here. All these are quite heavy things. These are these are rather fantastic spell effects. There's an ice wall, fireball, etc. But these are great big heavy lumps of metal. And again, a few more figures that are just a little bit too large because the square bases, that snag on the foam going in and out. So I, I don't risk doing that. I just pop them in upside down and I try to organize my cases so I know what's where. Okay, I hope that you found this useful. Uh, I'm a big fan of the KR multi case, as you can imagine. I've got about a dozen of these boxes and they've done me well some of these boxes are perhaps some of the cardboard boxes are perhaps two years old i think the oldest aluminium case is now just over a year old and they um they take the wear and tear of movement around etc and all the all the swapping around very well i've not had any issues with the hinges and i had any issues with the handles or the locks or the clasps so all in all brilliant quality item and in my mind worth the money